we're heat shrinking these in place. And I think it's about as good as it's gonna get. Well, good morning and welcome to the workshop. You might be forgiven for thinking that I'd given up on the five inch gauge locomotive. Certainly it felt a bit like that at times, uh, but actually I really just needed to take stock, take my time and get that crank axle rebuilt. So what was the problem with the old crank axle? Well, um, I had turned down all of the pins, all, those, all these little spigots on the pins, to 5 eighths of an inch, which is the diameter they need to be, which is what the reamed holes are in the webs. But somewhere between the 5 eighths of this pin shank and the 5 eighths of the reamer, there, there was some slop somewhere. So maybe these were slightly under, maybe the reamer was slightly over. But either way, it meant every single assembly had like the tight, most fractional ability to pivot in the uh, in in the the socket in the bore. So when those were all lined up one after the other, they all went like this, and it all came out like a bit of a banana. And I could have held it between centres. Um, but bear in mind that the centres on these are just drilled in the three jaw, so the centres in here aren't, aren't perfect, but they, they would have been good enough. But I could have held it between centres, and it would have been more straight than it was, definitely, because I'd laid it up on the surface plate, and I just had one like this and one like this, and they, that means one of them was resting on the edge of the web, and one of them was resting on the round of the web, and the rounds are just completely cosmetic, so they're not dimensioned properly, so basically one of them, were, the round was either pushing it up or pulling it down, depending, and that's what caused the banana shape. So, what was the solution? Well, Curly Lawrence suggests heat shrinking, or shrink fitting, sorry, uh, shrink fitting the pins into the webs, and so I thought I didn't really have much to lose, so it was a case of turning up, well, let's say quite a few that, 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 this one twice, that, that, this one twice, this one twice, and that. And this is my scrap web. And basically trying to get the exact diameter that was required that I could push fit it, uh, shrink fit it with, with, the, with the vise, and it would clamp down and it would be solid and I couldn't bash it out with a punch. Um, but not so tight that it raised a burr, because a couple of times I'd gone too much and it raised a burr as I was pushing it on, and we ended up with a gap between the uh, boss, I guess, on this crank pin and the web itself. So this was just miserable repetition, just lo loads of this. And then dropping it in, holding it, not with my fingers, dropping it in here with the parts aligned properly, and then squeezing it closed. Now, I know technically I should probably be using a press for this, an arbor press, but I don't have one. And Curly Lawrence suggests using a bench vise. And I put some bit of galvanized steel here to protect the parts against the uh, serrations on the jaws, and it worked perfectly fine. Well, that's about it for this video. Uh, I have spent so much time on this crank axle, and I, I appreciate there's not much footage in the video of me working on it, but it's, it's pretty boring stuff. It's just me turning shoulders on bits of three quarter inch steel bar and then pre pressing them and then taking them out and pressing them and taking them out um, until I get the right permutations. In fact, I had a penultimate assembly of that crank axle where it was out even more than it was with the Loctite. And I was so close to just chucking the whole thing in, either getting it built by somebody else or, uh, or just completely giving up on the locomotive because I felt like I just dedicated so much time to this. And it's not like I built one successfully before and this time it's not working. It was actually, maybe I'm just not cut out for this and maybe this is le legitimately just beyond me and I should you know, rein in my expectations about what I'm able to achieve. Luckily, uh, with the moral support of uh, Adam Crow, Crow Fittings, um, I, I persevered. And in that case, it was a stub axle that was a tiny bit, it wasn't loose, um, but it wasn't the shrink fit it needed to be. So I, I cleaned it up and refitted it with Loctite. Um, and while I was fitted it with Loctite, I held it within the, um, the, 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 the jaws and the 
uh, live center, although I guess it should be center to center. Um, <clears throat> and that actually set it, set it perfectly. There was about two or three, two or three thou eccentricity on the middle axle. Um, and then I was able to press in the final axle and there we go, gosh. Um, so having completed, completed this, technically the next thing to do is get the wheels on, quarter them, and then get the crank, uh, the, the connecting rods on and sort the profile out on them. Um, but I just don't think I have the emotional strength at this stage to do that. So I think I'm just gonna do something else, just for a little while, um, some other component maybe the, the water pump or something, um, just because I just need a break from this particular assembly because yeah, it has been a massive trial. So thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said, do apologize. There wasn't quite as much footage in this video as I would have normally liked to include, um, but rest assured the work was there and I'll see you next time.